analyze H1 NMR spectra. Students should be able to, well, there's a list of four things from the syllabus. Number of peaks, uh, that's in a previous assessment statement. That's not so bad. What the area under each peak means is also in A5.1. Chemical shift, just got to check the data booklet and it tells you the identity of the, the groups. Splitting patterns, that's easy to calculate, just add one. So why is this the very, very last video in the entire series? Because this is evil to explain. So let's look at an NMR spectrum for butanone. That seems a lot spikier than the SL spectra. Well, let me draw out the molecule. The integration trace above, the 233, three, that shows the relative areas under the peaks. So there are three sorts of hydrogen environments. With the two, that's going to correspond to the two just there in green. And those threes, well, there's two methyl groups, one at each end. And you could probably check in the data bucket to see which is which. But notice that they're split in different ways. And we're going to use that in this assessment statement to work out what's going on. The zero is TMS, tetramethylsilane. That's a different molecule. Don't worry about that when we're looking at the butanone. That's always at zero. So let's check the two orange protons, hydrogens. The peak is split into four, and that's due to what's called spin-spin coupling. How can we work that out? On the adjacent carbon, which confusingly is two carbons away from the hydrogens in question, there are three hydrogens that I've put in yellow boxes. So that gives us four peaks. Three adjacent hydrogens gives us four peaks. Hmm. Definitely we need to explain that a bit more. Let's look at the far methyl group. The adjacent carbon, two carbons away, that I've just covered in little sun signs, there's no hydrogens on that. So that just gives me one peak. The splitting pattern is just going to give me a one there. So what's the relationship? Three adjacent hydrogens gave me four peaks. No adjacent hydrogens gave me one peak. You know what? I'm just adding one. It's N plus one, where N is the number of adjacent hydrogens. Looking at the far left-hand hydrogens on the adjacent carbon that I've made like a little sun, there are two hydrogens, which means three peaks. So don't forget, adjacent carbon is two carbons away. So the splits, the splitting pattern is N plus 1. So what's N? It's the number of hydrogens on the next but one carbon, which you could call adjacents. There might be more than one carbon. And we have to dig a little deeper here. Uh, 112 trichloroethane is the next NMR spectrum. That's got two hydrogen environments. So how comes there's three peaks? Don't forget the zero is TMS. That's used to calibrate the machine. So the one is the hydrogen on the left, that one there. And the two corresponds to the two on the right. Let's look at the, the left-hand hydrogen first. So I've got to find the adjacent carbon to that, which I've made into a little star. That has two hydrogens on it, two protons on it, same thing. In NMR spectra, anyway. That gives me three peaks. For the two hydrogens on the right-hand side, where's the adjacent carbon? I'm going to make a little star around it. That has one hydrogen, or proton. One and one is two. It's going to be two peaks. It's split in two. We need to give these names. So the splitting patterns are singlets, doublets, triplets, and quartets. And they have that distinctive kind of Lord of the Rings tower look to them. We need to explain.